Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. Last time we got our third murder. Um, and I said last time that we were going to be talking with Harry, but I think actually that's not true because I believe what we need to do is we need to go to a bar and have a conversation is what's happening next. And because of that, want to put York in some different clothes. This one. Because I want it. He's going to take off his jacket. And I want to see what that says, what that t-shirt says, just to make sure. Because we haven't seen a good shot of it. And that's what I want to get here from uh, from today's part. Previously during the... Well, we know what happened previously. Diane was murdered. George is feeling... Hmm. How is he feeling? We know, we see how he is acting. He seems depressed. How much of that is an act, or how much of that is any sort of genuine remorse? Who knows? Zach, let's get back to the hotel. First Anna, then Becky, now Diane. I'm not looking forward to writing this investigation report. Agent Morgan. York. Do you have a moment? What is it, George? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Do you have any time later? Can't we just do it here? If possible, I'd like to go to a bar. Of course, we don't really have to. A bar? Now that sounds like a good idea. Zack, what do you think? We can go drinking with George, or turn him down and head back to the hotel. If you want to skip this, you can to just continue on with the story. But of course, we're going to go, go to a bar, have a drink with George. George, that scar on your cheek, where did you get it? This? Didn't I tell you? Well, it's not from work. I got it when I was a kid. A childhood injury. Tree climbing? I used to get a few scrapes myself climbing the big tree in our backyard. I used to climb it a lot. And fall out of it a lot. <laughs> this wasn't anything like that, though. It was my mother. She did it. I'm sorry, George. Don't worry. It's ancient history. The world is flooded with unreasonable violence. The strong overpower the weak, adults over children, men over women, and criminals over their victims. I have no memories of my father. He left before I knew him. My mother would hit me every time I asked why. And it didn't stop there. If I ate too slow, left my shoes scattered around, TV volume too loud. She found reasons to hit me. Hit me bad. The worst was what she called the tree punishment. She'd whip my back with these thin tree branches like a whip. Tree punishment was definitely the worst, I tell you. Just hearing those words used to make me shiver and want to pass out. And that's why I didn't want to show you those scars on my back. Every time after the tree punishment, she'd always say the same thing. This is hurting the tree more than it is hurting you. And me, being a naive, dumb kid, I believed her. I went to the woods to apologize to the trees. I kept asking myself, why is she hurting me this way? I thought long and hard about it. In the end, I just figured I'm weaker than her. That's why. It's the law of Mother Nature at work. The strong eat the weak. But now, you have the power to protect the weak. That's right. Perhaps I should thank my mother for guiding me into this line of work.
York. I've been an arrogant fool, haven't I? And if it weren't for me, both Becky and Diane would still be alive. I could have saved them both. You know, it's almost like they died because of me. You're out of your mind. I invited you to this bar for a drink. But I guess this bar is my confession chamber. And I wanted you to listen. And to tell you. Well, you must already hate me for causing all these problems and not following your orders. York, I'm sorry. I'll follow your orders from now on. You'll have my total cooperation. George, you've been as cooperative as you can be. You even invited an FBI guy to a bar for drinks. You've done a good job protecting this town. And the folks here respect you for that. Nobody can blame you for anything. Thanks. I do feel a little better. There's a, you know, this scene always made me wonder what George was doing. Is he trying to, like, is he actually showing some remorse or is he just trying to throw York off the trail? Since we're here, why don't you talk to a few other people? I'll just finish off my drink. Let me know before you leave, okay? Because he does say some things that do seem to be true, like his, uh, like his philosophy of that the strong dominate the weak. We know that's true. Um, his mother beating him. As far as we know, that's true. The scars on his back come from that. So it does seem like he is genuinely opening up to York, but for what reason? Is he just trying to trick York, or is there a part of him that regrets what he's been doing? Hey, Carol. Becky is dead. Diane, too. We've got Nick in custody as a suspect. Nick didn't do it. Ah, I know. Carol, you took a locket from Diane, didn't you? A locket with this mark on it. I'm busy, gotta go.
one of the changes when this changed from Rainy Woods to Deadly Premonition was that song. If you uh, watch the Rainy Woods trailer, you'll hear a bit of the original song that was going to be used here. Um, but I guess they figured that was a bit too Twin Peaksy, I suppose. One of the Twin Peaksy uh, elements that had to be changed when they switched to Deadly Premonition. Carol is acting conspicuous. She absolutely says Nick didn't do it. Of course, the implication of saying that is that she knows who did it. And York definitely catches on to that. York knows that Carol knows, and he's hoping she might say something when he showed her the picture. But no, no, she's not going to say anything. There we go. Sorry to keep you waiting, boys. Zack, Emily is already a goddess of the forest. Let's forget work for a bit and drink a little, shall we? York? Why is she here? I just thought the more the merrier. You know, to relax and get loose. Is this a problem? No, of course not. Pardon me, Emily, but I'm pooped. I think I'll just call it a night. George, I just got here and you're walking out on me? I was hoping the three of us could have a drink and let out a little steam. I'm afraid I've already had enough. And I already had a good man-to-man -man with York. So I'll see you guys. I think George likes you, but he's avoiding you all at the same time. <laughs> How astute. There's a reason? Nothing worth going into. It's a thing of the past. <laughs> okay, he did ask me out when I first came to town. I was still in high school. But I never really considered him my type. And there's the age gap thing, too. I respect him, of course. Or I wouldn't have taken this job otherwise. So, did you move to this town alone? Of course not. I came with my parents. Tell me about them, then. Sure, why not? My dad dealt in stocks in New York. He was hardly at home when I was a kid, always working. Those pieces of paper were far more important to him than I was. Which is no different now, really. I, I don't see much of him. My mother? Totally different story. A wonderful person that I still respect. She was always kind and understanding. Not only that, but she would always help me find my way. She could be fierce, too, scolding me if I took a wrong step. We had our battles, sure, but... All in all, she was a wonderful mother. Past tense? Yeah, she's gone now. Cancer, just before I graduated high school. She gave this to me just before she died. I take it with me wherever I go. It's what I treasure most. I'm sure she's very proud of you. I had a good time tonight. Good night. See you tomorrow. York. Yes. Please, don't lie to us, okay? 
I won't. Don't worry. I won't. We might have offered our, our FBI poncho to, to Emily. She wasn't really dressed for the rain. But I guess we're not going to do that. The next thing to do is to go back to our hotel. And, you know, we don't actually... If we do that, we go to the next chapter. We don't have to. You can just spend time in this chapter doing side quests. But, you know, we're just going to go back there. However, it is raining, so... That might mean there's a flower somewhere. I'm not seeing one. Any of the Ingrams are at home. I mean, where else would they be at this point? Thomas and Nick are at the Sheriff's Department. Nick does have a side quest. Let's see. Olivia is at home. There, of course, our home is, is available if we wanted to go there. There's not really a reason to. Uh, I'm not, maybe... Oh, no. There's a flower. There's a flower. That is along the road that goes to the hospital. Is there a closer one? There is one at the hotel. Um, I'm just wondering, if I go to the hotel, will that just automatically... I have to go into the, the marker point to get to the objective. I don't want, me, I don't want to, it to just warp... Oh, that's maybe a safer one to go for. We'll get the flower right now, I think. Okay. Emily asking York not to lie to them, and I guess what that's talking about is that Emily probably has figured out that York doesn't share all of the information he has with them, and uh, doesn't share all of his theories and his suspicions, perhaps. And she's asking that, uh, you know, if he, if, he know, if he knows something, please share. Don't keep it to himself. But how much does York actually suspect? Does he think anything about George? Because if he does, that would be a reason not to say anything. Remember? How many years ago was it now? That multiple homicide of young girls in that college town in Illinois. All the victims were cut open from the throat to the crotch. Ripped right open. During the autopsy, a second stomach was found inside the first victim's body. Of course, she didn't naturally grow a second stomach. One of the stomachs belonged to someone else. As more victims piled up, there was one with two hearts, one with two livers, four lungs. Different organs each time. Of course, those extra organs didn't do the girls much good. Right, Zach? And they say too much is never enough. In the end, we arrested a professor at the med school. They found the body of his daughter dead and the missing organs at his house. You remember what he said when we took him in? I was ordered to restore those deformed bodies back to normal. And remember who he said ordered him? An alien. Well, of course, we couldn't arrest an alien, so we arrested the professor instead. Serial killers can't be caught by logic and common sense. I learned this the hard way. That first case taught me that. Since then, these cases just keep getting more and more complicated. It's a tough job. I thought getting experience while I was young would make the job easier. That line about uh, it being an alien, well, that might not have to do with anything. But then again, it could also be the case that perhaps uh, Kaysen might have been involved with There's that. something here that you want to check out? Well, I'll join you if you like, but... I do need to get that report written. Of course we don't... Once you're finished, let's head back to the hotel. We don't know that for sure, but there is a, maybe a little implication there. This flower. There's something very mesmerizing about it. I wonder what it's called. I'll take one with me and ask someone later. All right, we got the flower with no name. What's the description of that flower? This white flower only blossoms when it is raining. All right, so we need that for George's side quest. 
which for most people is going to be the most desirable side quest to finish in the game. Speaking of George, um, let's have a look to see if he's at home right now. I mean, presume that he went home. Let's see, where's his house at? Yeah, he's at home. His side quest marker is up. So is Emily's. Yeah, we could tr we could head over to to their places. See if uh, see if we can do anything with them. I mean, we should be able to talk to George. I think with Emily, probably not. It is probably too late. Actually, why am I turning right here? That doesn't make any sense. I. The, uh, the bar cutscenes that we just saw is a couple of my favorite in the game. Just like this little personal conversation that, uh, that York has with both George and Emily. There was another really bad one around this time of year. Three years ago. Remember, Zach? Yes, that's right. That one. Multiple homicide, same MO, across Utah, Colorado, and Missouri. The victims were all average married housewives. But after being run over so many times by a car, they didn't look human. Five victims in two months in the three states. The way he killed them was always the same. But aside from that, there was nothing that linked the victims together. Well, they, they were all married. But age, race, nothing else matched up. Tire marks and fragments of paint ID'd the car that was used. That's where things got really tricky. The perpetrator used a 1993 model Cadillac Elante as a weapon. It was registered in the name of one senator... No, I don't feel like talking about this anymore. That senator's basement. I wish I could forget what I saw there. So, finding out about some of the previous cases York has been on would give some indication as to why York has such a... Um, such a flippant attitude towards a lot of the grisly things that he has seen, the violence and the bodies. He has a, he maintains a sense of humor about the whole thing because, well, considering everything that he's been through himself, he kind of has to. Let's see. Where's that house at? And it's up there. Okay, next block. Yep. All right. Well, his marker's there. Let's see if he... Yeah, it says open, so he's going to open the door. George, mm. which do you prefer, mustard or hot sauce? You didn't come all the way to my house just to ask me that. You don't have other things you should be doing? Of course I do. But I'm interested in you right now. Interested? Agent Morgan, look, my mother is sick. If it's not urgent... I'd rather we did this later. Is she very ill? Well, I have to say, it doesn't look good. I'm sorry to hear that. Anything I can do? No. This is a private matter. I can't ask for your help. You know, back in D.C., people always came to me for personal advice. I'm here to help you if you let me. There's no need for that, Agent Morgan. Please. You need to... Abide by the rules, right? Okay, I get it. I didn't mean to invade into your private matters. Oh. George, I just thought you could use a friend who wasn't a dumbbell. Back when I was a kid, my mother really liked this flower. Flower? Yes. Small flower. No name. It grows somewhere here in Greenvale, although I must admit I've never seen it actually growing anywhere. I think it would make my mother happy if you could get her that flower. George, that's good. Great idea. 
every woman likes to receive flowers. You know all about that, right, Zach? In any case, this is a personal matter. Make sure it doesn't interfere with the investigation. Of course not, George. But I'm going to find that flower for you. Well, of course, George has not seen the flower because everyone just goes home when it rains in Greenvale. And the flower only comes out when it rains. You need someone who's not from Greenvale, who is who is not gonna stay at home when it's raining, in order to go out and actually find this flower. Mm hmm. You know, George never did answer whether he likes mustard or hot sauce more. George, here it is. The nameless flower. Agent Morgan. No need to thank me. I did this on my own, during my private hours. Tell your mother I hope she gets well soon. Yeah, I'll do that. This will make her feel at least a little better. I sure hope so. I really do. Oh, got the radio. Take this. It's an emergency police radio. If you're ever in trouble, use it. And I'll be right there. Thank you, George. Now, Agent Morgan, don't take this the wrong way. It's not an emotional thank you gift for helping me with my mother. I'm giving you this so we can do our jobs more smoothly, that's all. So this is the side quest that everyone wants to do when they find out about it because you get the fast travel radio. As far as what we want to do right now, let me just hang around to Emily's house. I don't think it's going to be open. Um, I, I doubt it's going to be, but let, we should check it out. Also, let me see if, uh, if I can use the radio to get there. Uh, let's see. Where do we have that? Forget how you use it, actually. Uh, no, not that. So it's not under the side stuff. Main stuff? It's not under that. I was looking through items, but I didn't see it around. Hmm. It wouldn't make sense for it to be under weapons now, would it? Huh. I don't remember how you do it. I'm gonna have to look that up, I suppose. Uh, for right now, let's just head over to Emily's house. So, just want to see if her door is open. I don't think it's gonna be, because you had to. You have to go to her house at very specific times. Yeah, it's closed. It's going to be too late for her to actually uh, be it for for her door to be open. Um, what else could we possibly do? Uh, not that. He's not going to be available. There's a bunch of people at the bar, but. We don't actually need to talk to any of them. I guess all we're going to do is just probably go home. Well, not home, because we own a home. I mean, we're going to go to the hotel. That's probably all we really need to do right now. We got the important thing, which was the radio. Uh, so we might as well just head, head back and do that report that we need to file... It's very important. Let's focus on the case at hand. The murders with the red seeds. Officially, the Bureau has not made a statement about these seeds. Some even claim that they are irrelevant to the killings. But after the red seeds were found in a Boston homicide, I've been unable to get them out of my head. 
I've even gone through all of the files looking for similar cases, and we found seven other homicides related to the seeds. The victims were all young girls, and they were killed in eight different states. They arrested all seven murderers, but there was no connection between them. However, we must not overlook there was one thing linking the cases together, and that's the red seeds. And I have a hunch this case here in Greenvale is going to lead us to the truth about those seeds. Don't you think so, Zach? Well, let's just do what we can do and do our best. And by doing our best, I'm sure we'll get to where we need to go. Mm-hmm. And we're go- of course, we are going to ignore that we did find a huge pile of seeds coming from trees in, uh, in the town at this point. Because the story says we did not find that yet. We are coming up pretty soon to the point where the story says we do find it, though. Uh, I do believe that is... I think that's the next chapter. So that's a little bit of background that York has not mentioned yet. Why is he in Greenvale? Why did he come here to investigate this case? Uh, he, He only said at this point that it was because he had an interest in the killers of young women, but the actual reason is because he's been investigating a whole bunch of cases involving the Red Seeds, and he was hoping that he would find out something about the Red Seeds here because of the M.O. of Anna's killing, and when he found a Red Seed in Anna's mouth, that was when he took command because it confirmed that the Red Seeds were involved in this case somehow. Zach, let's go over our progress. All right. From what Olivia told us, and the sketchbook we found at Becky's house, Nick and Diane became our primary suspects. There were a couple of reasons for this. First, Becky gave the missing locket to Diane. Also, Nick has no alibi for when Anna and Becky were killed. We followed Nick to the art gallery which led us, unfortunately, to our third victim. The third victim, Diane, was strung up in the entrance hall of the art gallery. Her hands were tied and a knife was sticking out of her chest. However, there was a marked difference from the previous crimes. Do you remember what that was, Zach? See, was it that there were multiple bodies, that there was no murder weapon, or it was right after the crime? That's right. Diane was still alive. This suggests that very little time had passed since the crime was committed. Which means the criminal was still close by. It was someone near the scene. There are two possible candidates. Nick, who was knocked out in the entrance, and one other. Zach, who was the other person in the gallery? Well, Harry and Quint were nowhere near the scene, as far as we know, so it must be Kaysen. That's right. Kaysen. We followed Willie, good dog, all the way to him. I like the delivery on that. Kaysen's statement came out as follows. He and Diane were in a physical relationship. That was why he visited the gallery. The two were in the middle of such a meeting when Nick showed up. Diane lost her cool and shut Kaysen up in the basement. Now what did Kaysen hear when he was locked up? Heard footsteps of boots. That's it. The sound of boots passing by. Nick was wearing boots that day which means it was likely that Diane met with Nick in her room. Nick said he argued verbally with Diane about her playing around with men, but they eventually decided to go out drinking to make up. However, immediately after that, Nick was attacked by someone in the entrance hall and knocked unconscious. 
we saw the rest. Zack, do you think that Nick is our serial killer? <laughs> Smiley face? Uh, frowny face or indecisive face? Well, I mean, I have advanced knowledge, but I mean, if I was in the moment, I guess I wouldn't have any idea. Me too. Asha sent in a report too. He found a large volume of red seeds in Diane's stomach. This confirms her as a victim of the raincoat killer. Remaining leads. There is the locket, which is in Carol's possession. The man with the tattooed back, and the upside-down peace sign. There's a lot left to answer. I hope the coffee will give us more guidance tomorrow. Yeah, I guess we're at a dead end. We have to rely on the coffee. And our flies, of course, our fly friends. Zach, what did you think about George pouring his heart out? I was surprised. It's the end of a monarchy. And he called me York instead of Agent Morgan. Do you know what time it is? Um, I'm sorry. I I couldn't sleep, so I was drinking alone. My mother was a very kind woman. Oh, is he not taking the coat off? She always smiled so brightly. I baked cakes and cookies every day. Because if you're wearing a normal suit... You say that I needed the sugar because I spent so much time thinking. He takes the coat off in this scene. My father was always quiet. We never talked much. He was a federal agent, just like me. And he was hardly ever at home. The only words he ever had for me were harsh ones. I had a vivid imagination, and I remember he once said this to me. There are plenty of crazy things in this world. You don't have to go dreaming them up. And it's my job to make sense out of them. One day you'll understand what I'm saying. I found out later that my father was one of the first to ever use criminal profiling to catch bad guys. And so now I'm doing exactly the same job that he did. Like father, like son. Mm, can I ask you something? Shoot. Mind if it's something personal? Fire away. Who's Zach? Zack is a friend of mine. Oh, so you do have friends. Yeah. He's my only friend. What kind of person is he then? Well, I, I've never seen his face. But he's always with me, and we discuss everything. When did you become friends? A long time ago. Back when I was a child. I was seven. I woke up one morning to hear my mother crying in the living room. This wasn't normal, so... I headed in to see her. My father was there pointing a gun at my mother. I was so scared. I closed my eyes. So I, I don't remember much more. But I do remember the words my father said to me. At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. When I came back to my senses, they were both dead. He shot my mother and then killed himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. Zack's with me. It was around that time that we became friends. I'm here. I'm with you, 
he said. I'll be here always. We can get through this together. Quite aside from that terrible scene in front of me, that voice seemed to make me calmer. And here we are, working together, getting through things. This is the first time I've ever told anyone about this. I wonder if Zack will get angry. <sighs> That's a sad story. But I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm sure there was a reason for what your father did. I know. I think maybe I became an agent to find out why he did what he did. Oh, oh yeah, York, I, I forgot to thank you. Thank me? For what? You saved my life. If you didn't save me at the gallery, I would have died along with Diane. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. What did you just say? Useless? <laughs> I was never expecting to hear you say that. Huh. There might be a modest guy in you after all. Finally, you noticed? You're a little slow, aren't you? Maybe <laughs> hopeless, but not useless. Zach, do you think Emily got home safely? Anyway, I think it's more serious of a situation than I thought. Do you remember? Our conversation with Emily. She's really interested in you. I think she's starting to have certain feelings for you. If that's the case, Zach, you and I are rivals. This is a very serious situation indeed. Well, if it comes to that, let it be a fair fight. Agreed? Thomas! 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 Let me out of here! Come on! Please! Just for a moment! One second! Eat it. Eat it. Here, Thomas. Thomas. I think I'm going mad. I know you're there. Come on, please. Thomas. 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 Nick not taking imprisonment very well. cleared the episode and also get a confirmation at the end there that uh yeah carol does know what's going on we did see that picture of uh anna becky and carol with the mysterious man with the tattoo on his back so she does know who it is after all all this time and uh well, I mean, it was clearly, you know, clearly Thomas standing next to her, though I'm, I'm not sure if we're supposed to realize that yet, but you can clearly see that that was Thomas, and that's why he was not at the police station. So Thomas also knew what's going on. So that's our little confirmation that some people are holding back some information. Some people know what's going on, not sharing. Um, so maybe that's the reason that York has not been forthcoming with everything he knows either. I think that this is probably my favorite little uh, chapter in the game. There's not much gameplay 
you don't do a whole lot, but there's some nice conversations and you get to know some backstory for our three main characters. So this was probably my favorite little uh, little scene in the game. And I'm a bit disappointed that he did not take the jacket off during the scene with Emily in the hotel room. Because if, he, if you're wearing a normal suit, he does take the jacket off. He's only wearing a shirt. Um, I guess with the DLC suit, he doesn't. I don't know if that's going to be the case with every DLC suit. Or is it only the field agent suit? Is there something different about that one that he doesn't take the jacket off? Hmm. Puzzling. I'm disappointed because I wanted to get a good look at the t-shirt. I want to know if the t-shirt actually does say, I am FBI, because that's what it looks like it says. But maybe uh, we just, maybe there's no way of actually seeing that. Well, that's disappointing. But in any case, uh, we did a little, we did only a little bit of gameplay and we got the radio. So that's good. I have to remember how to use it because it didn't show up in my inventory. If that's the case, I don't actually remember how you use it. Um, but I do. I did like the cutscenes and the little conversations that we have here uh, in this part. So, we're continuing on. This episode is done. As York said, hopefully the coffee will have more information for us. Yeah, episode 2, part 2 cleared. We're entering episode 3. And the copy, the coffee will have more information for us as uh, York's going to have breakfast the next day. And he will get a lead as to what he's going to have to do. And I believe this time he's going to have to go talk to Harry. I believe now that happens. So that's going to happen next time. And I'll see you then for more Deadly Premonition Director's Cut.